put your hands together and bless the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, he is. Come on, look at your name and say, God is worthy. Hallelujah. Oh, we love to call your name in something we cannot explain. read the second one up there say it and he said please show me your glory now fasten your seatbelt here we go I'm going to teach part one attracting the glory of God everybody say attracting the glory of God all right show me your glory or an imploration God please show me your glory Moses said 
Where does this come from? Why is Moses saying to God, show me your glory? What's the context in which Moses is saying, show me your glory? Because it's Moses speaking. So why is Moses saying to God, show me your glory? Well, the children of Israel had been in a pandemic for 400 years. 400 years. Now, I'm having a hard time getting people motivated and back to church and back involved after one year because if you're not careful, your heart can get hardened and you can start talking about, well, I don't fit in. I'm No, no, no you ain't been here. So you got to get back in. Get in where you fit in. Fit in where you get in. You got to warm it up. So after, can you imagine, that's after one year of what I'm going through as a pastor, but can you imagine after 400 years of slavery, oppression, beat down, The children of Israel were slaves in bondage to the Egyptians. All they knew was beat down. And God says, I'm going to deliver you. Moses, you are going to be the deliverer of the children of Israel out of slavery into the promised land. And Moses said, no way. Why? I know, you know, I've been preaching all my life, it seemed like all my life, 43 years pastoring this church, and I have said this word but didn't know what it meant. Moses said to God, I'm not going to do it because the people are stiff-necked. Have you ever woke up in the morning, anybody but me ever had a, ooh, isn't, isn't that awful? You have that stiff neck and you walk around all day long like this, and somebody will just, oh, I mean, you, it's just pain, just pain, a stiff neck. Well, that's not what the Bible's talking about. They weren't all walking like this after 400 years. That's not what stiff neck meant. In the original Hebrew, stiff neck meant antagonistic. People who want to fight. 400 years, all they knew was beat down, oppressed, fighting for everything. They were so used to negativity that God wanted to deliver them, but they did not want deliverance because their comfort zone was oppression. I wonder this morning how many people God would have already delivered you. God would have already opened doors of opportunity for me and for you. But our mentality is we're so used to folks lying on us, talking about us, hating on us until God wants to do something and we can't let them go. In other words, your oppressors keep you out of your destiny. Moses, bring them out. Not going to do it. They're stiff-necked. They just want to fight. My dad used to say when us kids were little, you kids would rather fight than eat when you're hungry. That's what my dad used to say to us because siblings like to fight. Moses said, I'm not going to do it. And God said, all right, I'll send an angel to help you. Moses said, no way. God said, all right, I'll send my abiding presence to help you. Moses said, no way. Moses, what do you want? Show me. Your glory. I'm not doing anything without you. I want your glory. Why did Moses want God's glory? Most of us want God's favor. And there's nothing wrong with that. I want God's favor. So I know sometimes I ask you and you think it's a trick question, but it's not. How many of you want the favor of God on your life? I'm going to wave both hands. I want the favor of God in case God is watching right now. Lord, look at the ones with their hands raised. Favor. In fact, do you know what the Bible says about favor? This is what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28. Brother Malachi, just start walking that way and I'll be favor. Deuteronomy 28 says this about favor. Favor will change chase you down and bring you back because it's got something in store for you that you did not get while you walked by it. Favor, favor is a visitation. Oh, Jesus. Favor is a visitation. Every now and then I get visited by favor. Woo, 
that feels good. Pastor G got visited by favor this morning. Sister Gracie got visited by favor. How many of you have ever had a visitation of favor? Have you ever had a visitation? A visitation of, of favor. But glory is different than favor. Glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod, K-A-W hyphenated B-O-D-E, kabod. And what kabod means is a Abundant, overflowing, overflowing, and not just of stuff, but that your mind is at such peace, nobody can wreck you. Your heart is so at peace that no matter who comes against you, they can't trouble and muddy the waters for you. You just are walking in abundance spiritually and, yes, naturally, because I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Don't be ashamed because favor chases you down. Somebody said to me the other week, Pastor Dan, God gave me a new car, but I was afraid to tell people because they would hate on my favor. Honey, drive up to the front, honk in your horn. We need to know you have had a visitation, a favor. But glory is different than favor. One of the Hebrew words, one of the Hebrew words for glory it means kabod, abundance. But there's a next level of glory that very few people get. Oh, I'm about to drop it like it's hot. There's a difference. There's a different level of glory. There is glory, kabod, and then the Bible talks about a second kind of glory. In the Hebrew, can I teach in this place? In the Hebrew, it's called Shekinah glory. We sing about it. We preach about it. We talk about it, but we have no clue what it is. I'm about to tell you. Because if you ever discover the Shekinah glory, here's what it means. The Shekinah glory means this, residence. One of the words of Shekinah is residence. Somebody holler at your boy and say residence. In other words, favor is a visitation, but glory is a residence. I'm going to say it one more time. Favor is a visitation, but glory is a residence. In other words, if you ever get the glory of God, Shekinah means the weighted, the heaviness, the full impact. If you ever get the glory of God, it well, it's like this. Have you ever been to visit a million dollar home? And you say, whoa, look at this. Look how beautiful this house is. I'm visiting this million-dollar home. That's favor. Favor is like going to visit a million-dollar house. But glory is you own the house. And favor is just, oh, I feel like preaching here. Favor is just one of the bedrooms in the house. Favor is visitation. Shekinah glory is residence. So when you have Shekinah glory, you don't have to wait for a visitation. <laughs> you just go open the door of favor and say, uh, you know what I need? I need this. I'm calling upon him because he said if I call, he'll answer. If I ask, I shall receive. Good measure, press down. I need some running over in my life. Favor lives in the house called glory. The Shekinah glory. Favor is a visitation. Glory is a residence. Seek not just for favor. Seek to be in the glory. But the reason most people can't get there, it is an offense-free zone. Favor pats you on the back. It has to make a visitation. But if you ever live in the residence called Shekinah Glory... You are dead to the emotions of when folks try to cause you to be offended. I'm so spiritual, I fall out and talk in tongues, but you still hate your brother. So you're, you're qualified for some favor because you love the Lord and you're a tither and you give. But if you can ever get to that space called Shekinah, it will be irrelevant to you what people say about you and what people do to you because you do not want an eviction notice to your, oh Lord, you do not want to be set out on the street because you live in a house called Shekinah Glory. 
So when Moses said, God, show me your glory, he was essentially saying, reveal to me the most intimate pieces of yourself. In fact, it actually meant overflow in me. God, overflow in me. Let me be a reflection of who you are. Let it overflow. Let people walk up to me and say, I don't even know you, but something's different about you. What is it about? Let it overflow abundant, the glory abundantly in me. Let it do that. The ultimate intimate details are not something God hands over lightly to people. You know what the glory is? It is the I want to know about you of a relationship. I want to know about you. Pastor Reuben, Pastor Sandra, come here right quick, real quick. I've only got nine minutes. You got to move, Pastor Reuben. You got to move. You got to move. Okay. So let's say, how long have you all been married? Ten years. Okay. Give them a love. Ten years of marriage. You represent a married couple, just for a second, for all the married folks here and those watching television this morning. Usually, watch in a relationship, there's one person who likes to talk about themselves a lot. And the other person has to listen a lot. They never ask, how was your day? How are you feeling? Can I do anything for you? It's always, all day, all night, all the time, all about me. Most of us have a relationship with God like that. Lord, I need you. God, I need, I need a husband. I need a car. I need an apartment. I need finance. I need a house. I need... And we never have had a relationship with the Lord where it was about him. You will never have the glory until your relationship is no longer all about you. Show me. Tell me about you, Lord. You know, I treat the Lord like my best friend. Some of you are going to freak out because I've never told anybody this in my life. I don't even think Linda knows this. And she's lived with me for 43 years. But I treat the Lord my, 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 like my best friend. I tell the Lord, Mims, you know what I do? Every night before I go to sleep, I tell, I tell the Lord, good night. Now, I know some of you are just like, you tell the Lord good night? Yep, I do. You know what I say? Like when I'm getting ready to go to sleep, uh, Elder Dylan, I say, I say to the Lord, how was your day, Lord? How was all of us wacky Christians? How, how, do, how were we treating you? Were we doing good? How was your, did you have a good day, Lord? Uh, how are you? Now, I know some of you are looking at me strange, but that's really the relationship I have with the Lord. I don't do a lot of thee, thou, the woo. That's not how I re operate my relationship. Some of us think our relationship with the Lord is Mary, the mother of Jesus, on the front yard going, Woo! That's not the relationship God wants with you. God wants a relationship with you that you can say, How's your day going, Lord? So before I go to sleep at night, I say, Good night, Lord. And guess what he says back to me? Don't hate on my favor, yo. I care to know about him. I'm in a relationship called, Lord, I want to know about your glory. What then is it that attracts the glory? With seven minutes, you better strap in like you're at Great America, which is opening this Saturday after a year and a half of being shut down. Number one, here we go. Get your pen, your pencil, your highlighter, your Mac mascara. Take some notes. Get your Snapchat. Get your phone out. Get ready to do it. Here we go. Here we go. How do I attract the glory of God? Number one, attraction starts with friendship. Any good relationship does not start with sex. Oh, Lord. Too soon? Too soon? The quickest way that you can know a relationship will not be sustained if it was met in the club and 90 minutes later it's like, boom, shakalaka. You know it's not going to work. Too soon? Too soon? You kids, put your fingers in your ears because you don't know nothing about this. Ain't none of you girls never kissed no boys, have you? You ain't kissed no. Brits, you done kissed. Uh, put your fingers in your ear, girl. Attraction starts with friendship. How you doing? Come here, Linda. Linda, not, no, Linda, Linda, Linda. <laughs> if that wasn't our best friend, you'd be upset. Linda was... Uh, an older woman when I met her, she was, uh, <laughs> Linda's two years older than me. I always call her an older woman. I was 14 years old. Our attraction started because of friendship. I want, 
I got a mic. I got a mic. I got a mic. I got a mic. The attraction started with friendship. We're now married 43 years. Why? Because attractions that start with friendship, attractions that start with friendship, Pete, I may need a backup mic. Be ready. Attractions that start with friendship can be sustained. Give me that mic. The battery must be going out on this. I'm flipping mics right now. All right, I'm going to. I'm going to go to this mic. Please turn it on, son, and turn it up. All right, can I have one extra minute? Because I had to do that. Can I have one extra minute? All right, I'm going to have one extra minute. Attractions that start with friendship are sustainable. Well, Pastor Dan, thank you, honey. Pastor Dan, you don't know. He swings me from the chandeliers. The sex is so good. Too much? Too Too far? Girl, I'm going to pay notice to you. The chandelier about to rip out and you about to fall to the ground. You're going to be sprawled out on the ground. He's going to be down the street with some heifer. Too much? Because y'all don't even know how to talk about spaghetti. You don't even know how to talk about friendship stuff. You have no relationship other than boom, shakalaka. I'm on TV. God talked face to face with Moses as a friend. The attraction then built from there. Proverbs 18 and 24 says, A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Well, didn't nobody invite me to be involved at church? Nobody, nobody said hello to me. A pastor said to me recently, during this pandemic, a pastor, nobody called me. Nobody. Ch- I said, well, who did you call on? Who did you check on? They, they hadn't called nobody. They hadn't checked on nobody. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. Quit waiting for people to reach out to you. You reach out the hand of friendship. You show up when you're supposed to show up. You get it together. Somebody holler at your boy and say, oh yeah. yeah. Number two. Did I get it? I get an extra minute. I get an extra minute. Okay. Okay. Proverbs uh, number two. Avoid the rush. Exodus 33 and verse 13. Somebody say avoid the rush. Now therefore I pray thee if I have found grace in thy sight show me now thy way that I may know that I may get to know you. Attraction is not built by jumping straight to the best intimate parts. Take the time to get to know the Lord. Enjoy the journey. I'm going to be a big singer someday. Really? When you going to show up and sing up here? I'm going to be a dancer one. Really? Join the dance ministry. I'm going to pastor a great church. Show up three Sundays in a row first. Why don't we start the... I'm going to be a millionaire, Pastor Dan. No, you're not. If you can't be faithful with $100, you ain't got a million. Don't look for it. It ain't coming. We want to hurry it. I want to be a pastor. And by the way, this is not your harvest field. If you're looking to start a living room church, this is not your harvest field. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Okay? Boom! There it is. So avoid the rush. Don't rush your relationship with God. Kids, if I could give you any, any, anything that will change your life, slow down and enjoy the journey. Number three. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Number three. Only, I'm talking about attracting the glory. What was number one? What was number one? Attraction starts with friendship. Number two, avoid the rush. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry. Number three, I'm going to drop it and this is it. Only have eyes for him. Exodus 33 and 16. For wherein shall it be known here that if that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight. Have you ever talked to some girls, y- y'all, all you old folks, close your ears for a second. All, you, all, all the old folks, close your ears. I'm going to talk to you. Girls, have you ever had a guy, you know, he's up in your Kool-Aid. <laughs> but he's scanning the crowd the whole time he's supposed to be talking to you. He's not the one. If he's scanning the crowd looking for a better gig, he's not the one. You want the guy that says, what'd you say, girl? Would you say it again and say it real slow? Say, he only has eyes for you. Don't settle. Man of God, don't.
don't settle. She should have only eyes for you. Now, I'm gonna draw it spiritually. You know why some of us do not have glory in our life? We're always scanning the world. Where can I find a better husband? Where can I find a better church? Where can I find a better job? Where can I find a better relationship with somebody? Where can I? And we never are steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Our eyes are just fixed on him. That's where the glory starts. Proverbs chapter 16 and 3. Commit thy way to the Lord, whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Listen to this as I wrap you up this morning. Did I get one extra minute yet? Did I get one extra minute? Moses knew without God's glory, he would be a total fail. But if God's glory came, he would succeed and absolutely nothing could stop him. I serve you notice today. No weapon that has ever formed against you can prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment, the Lord shall condemn. Why? Because if you live in the house, the residence called the Shekinah glory of God, you'll be in the place where he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God abides under the shadow of the almighty. Favor is a visitation, but glory is a residence. Stand on your feet and give God a big, 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 big praise. Uh, look at that. Ten seconds. La -di -da -di -da. Come join Pastor Dan on a trip of a lifetime as you journey through Israel. This spiritual pilgrimage is sure to touch your soul as Pastor Dan guides you through the Holy Land. From the Mount of Olives to the Garden Tomb to getting baptized in the Jordan River by Pastor Dan, you'll see the Bible come to life right in front of your eyes. These will be moments that you cherish for a lifetime as Pastor Dan brings the Bible to life. This spiritual pilgrimage is sure to change your life. Be a part of this amazing journey. Log on to bit.ly slash danwillisisrael2021 or call 800-637-2355. That's 800-637-2355. New from Pastor Dan Willis, the Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration. Let's hear what critics are saying about this amazing new release. This would be a good book for members of a church board to read if they feel God calling them to develop a multicultural ministry. Pastor Willis's experience would give a good foundation for discussion and planning. The book would be a nice tool for pastors as they get a vision to go outside their church and be the hand and feet of Christ. Change is never easy, but it needs to happen so no one is left behind. For over 40 years, Pastor Dan Willis has led a growing multicultural church community in the suburbs of Chicago. His insight, wisdom, and overall love for people are sure to help bless and empower your ministry. Order your copy of The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration. Log on to danwillis.org today and take your ministry to the next level.